All right, let's look at some additional examples using pairwise comparison and then kind of wrap up our thoughts on the pairwise comparison and our voting methods in general. So let's go back to um, the Wildcat softball example. We want to know how many total pairings are needed for the pairwise comparison method. So remember that asking total pairings and asking for total points is the same thing. We're still going to use our n times n minus 1 divided by 2 for both of those answers. So in this case, how many um, candidates do we have? We have 5. So we have 5 times 5 minus 1, or 5 times 4 is 20, divided by 2. So there will be 10 pairings or 10 points needed for this election. How many total points will be distributed? And what is the maximum number of points any one candidate could win using the pairwise comparison? Well, remember the total points is the same as the total pairings. So since there are 10 pairings, there will be 10 total points. But remember that no one candidate can earn all 10 of those points because a candidate can only earn as many points as comparisons in which they are involved. So if there are five candidates, all candidates will be compared with each other candidate, but not themselves. So 5 minus 1 or 4 comparisons is the maximum number for each candidate. And therefore, 4 points is the maximum number of points for a single candidate. So now let's look at which candidate would win using the pairwise comparison method. And then we want to rank all of the candidates or give an extended ranking is another way of saying that. So let's start with our comparison of A versus B. So remember, we're going to go through each column and we're going to look to see which one is ranked higher, A or B. If A is ranked higher, then we award those vote, votes to A. If B is ranked higher, we award those votes to B. So A is ranked higher in column 2, so that's 6. Column 3, so that's 6 plus 5 is 11. And column 6, so that's plus 2. So 11 plus 2 is 13 total votes for A. Then we go back and look for B. B is ranked higher than A in column 1, so that's 8. And B is ranked higher than A in column 4, so that's 8 plus 4 is 12. B is ranked higher in column 5, so 12 plus 3 is 15. So B gets a total of 15 votes. So B is the winner of this comparison. And we can repeat this process for each of our candidates. So we're going to go back and we're going to compare A and C. So C is ranked higher in column 1, so C gets 8. A is ranked higher in column 2, so A gets 6. A is ranked higher than C in column 3, so A gets an additional 5. C is ranked higher in column 4. So C gets an additional 4, C is higher in column 5, so C gets an additional 3, and A is higher in column 6, so A gets an additional 2, for a total of 13 votes for A and 15 votes for C. For A versus D, in column 1, we have A over D, so A gets 8. A is over D in column 2, so A gets an additional 6. D is over A in column 3, so we will give those five votes to D. D is over A in column 4, so those four votes go to D as well. D is over, col or over A in column 5, so D gets those three. And D is over A in column 6, so D gets those two. So a total of 14 votes for A and 14 votes for D. So who's the winner of this comparison? Well, there's not a winner. There's a tie. And if you remember, in that case, we award half a point to each candidate. So now let's look at A versus E. Who's ranked higher in column 1? Well, A is ranked over E, so A gets those 8. In column 2, A is higher than E, so A gets 6. In column 3, E is higher, so E gets 5. In column 4, E is higher than A, so E gets 4. In 5, E is higher than A, so E gets 3. And in <coughs> sorry, 6, A is higher than E, so A gets 2. 
So A gets a total of 16, 8 plus 6 plus 2, and E gets a total of 12, 5 plus 4 plus 3. And we would continue this process for each of our comparisons, B versus C, B versus D, B versus E, and C versus D, C versus E, and D versus E. And so now that we have all of our comparisons, now we're ready to determine the winner of the election by looking at the comparisons. So let's start with A. A one, wins one and ties one. So A gets one point for winning and half a point for tying. So A gets a total of one and a half points. B wins one, two, three. So B gets three points. C wins one. So C gets one point. D wins two and ties one. So D gets two and a half. And E wins two or gets two points. So now we can use these point values to determine the ranking of the candidates. First place goes to Beth with three points. Second to Dawn with two and a half points. Third place to Eileen with two points. Fourth place to Alice with one and a half. And fifth place to Kara with one point. And note that Beth is not a Condorcet candidate in this case because she has more points than anybody else. But she did lose to candidate D, so she didn't beat everybody, and therefore she's not a Condorcet candidate. So now let's say that before the election actually happened, Eileen was found to be ineligible and was dropped from the election. What does the new preference schedule look like? Well, this is kind of the same concept as when we're doing the plurality with elimination, and we simply eliminate one of the candidates, and then combine any of the columns that are now ranked the same. And in this case, we don't have any columns that are ranked the same, so we don't have to worry about combining any columns, but we can simplify it and clean it up a little bit so that we don't have all the E's to have to worry about. And so now let's find the new winner using the, the pairwise comparison method and then compare our results to the original winner. So go ahead, pause the video right here, take a few minutes to create all of your comparisons and then to determine who wins each comparison. And then once you have your answer, come back to the video and let's talk about the comparison or comparing the results between this new election and the original winner. All right, so now hopefully you've taken a few minutes, you've created or you've calculated the winner yourself, and you have found that since Eileen was dropped, Dawn became the winner of the pairwise comparison. But if you remember, who won originally? Well, originally, Beth was the winner because Beth won three comparisons. So this brings up this concept of, is it fair that a non-winning candidate, Eileen in this case, dropped out, yet that caused the original winner, Beth, to no longer win the election? And most people would say probably no, that's not something that is considered fair. So the last section of this unit is actually going to be looking at this concept of fairness criteria and the concept that um, all of our voting methods do violate at least some of our fairness criteria. So just kind of a review on Copeland's pairwise comparison. A majority candidate will always be the pairwise comparison candidate because remember, a majority candidate will always beat everybody else head to head. And if they beat everybody else head to head, that makes them a Condorcet candidate. And a Condorcet candidate will always be the pairwise comparison candidate because they will have more points than anybody else. And so that's kind of our second point here, is that a Condorcet candidate will always be a pairwise comparison candidate because they will win every comparison and therefore have more points than anybody else. Now, just like with all of our methods, there are some flaws with the pairwise comparison. One is that it's time consuming if you have a large number of candidates. Two is that if a non-winning candidate drops out of the election, that it may change the winner of the election, which we saw with Beth and Eileen dropping out and making Dawn the winner. 
And also, the pairwise comparison winner may not be a majority candidate, a plurality candidate, nor a Condorcet candidate. In fact, they don't even have to have any first place votes at all, and it's still possible for them to end up winning more comparisons than anybody else. So let's look at a summary example that's kind of bringing together everything that we've talked about in Unit 1. Um, at least up to this point with the voting methods. So we have, first let's state the majority candidate. Well, remember a majority requires more than half, and in this case there are 18 total votes. Half would be 9, so more than half would be 10. So is there a majority candidate? No, because nobody has more than 10 or more votes. What about the plurality candidate? Well, remember that the plurality candidate is simply the candidate with the most first place votes. So in this case, C has seven, that's more than anybody else. So C is the plurality candidate. But is that a strong condition in this election? Well, C has seven, but how many does B have? Six, right? And A has how many? Five. So C just barely has more than anybody else. So no, I would say that the plurality is not a strong condi condition in this particular election. Now, if C had like, 12 and the others were only splitting the remaining what six then yes it might be a strong condition what about the condorcet candidate is there a condorcet candidate here well in order to determine that we would have to compare each of our candidates and if you want to take the time you can pause and spend a little time comparing those and it turns out that in this case, we do have a Condorcet candidate, and that is candidate D. And knowing that we have a Condorcet candidate, we can easily identify the winner of the pairwise comparison. And we know that because a Condorcet candidate will always win the pairwise comparison method. So the pairwise comparison candidate in this case would be D, because D is a Condorcet candidate. And are they strong conditions? And the answer is yes. If you have a Condorcet candidate, that means they beat everybody else in the pairwise comparisons, and therefore that would be a strong uh, condition. So kind of following along on our summary, let's fill in the blanks with always implies or may or may not imply. So does a majority candidate always imply a plurality candidate? And yes, it does, because remember, majority is more than half, plurality is simply more than anybody else. Well, if you have more than half, you will always have more than anybody else. Majority candidate, because they have over half, always implies a Condorcet candidate, because if they have over half the votes, they will be guaranteed to beat everybody else head to head. The majority candidate always implies a plurality with elim elimination winner. Because remember that if you have a majority candidate, your plurality with elimination is over after round one. So that would always imply the winner there. Majority candidate does not have to be the board account winner. In fact, we will see some examples where um, that's not the case. The Condorcet candidate, um, what about them and pairwise comparison? Well, if they are a Condorcet candidate, that means that they have beaten everyone else in a head-to-head -head comparison, so they will always be the pairwise winner. The Condorcet candidate does not have to be a plurality candidate. The Condorcet candidate does not have to be the board account winner. And the Condorcet candidate does not have to be the plurality with elimination winner. And our final thoughts about voting and the voting methods, we have seen four different methods that can be used to determine the winner of an election. There are many others, but these are the four main methods. And we have also seen that um, a different method will often produce a different winner. So the next part of this topic and the final part of the Unit 1 material will be discussing the strengths and weaknesses of each method. And in particular, we'll be discussing the ideas of fairness and relating those ideas to each method. So Tom Stoppard <clears throat> said it best, it's not the voting that's democracy, it's the counting.